Good morning, Reverend Deb Hansen, First United Methodist Church, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, in our soon to be completed sanctuary. You can see we've done a lot of work. We have two more weeks before in-person worship, so we hope you'll join us this morning again for video worship and know that you're blessed and that God blesses you. Welcome. <laughs> holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. A minister was leading a workshop at his church with a group of people, and he held up a piece of paper with a black dot in the middle of the paper. And the pastor, as he held it up, he said, what do you see? And someone said, a black dot. Right, the minister said, what else do you see? No one spoke. Silence. Finally, he said, don't you see anything other than the black dot? No, came the chorus of voices. And I'm surprised, he said. You have completely overlooked the most important thing of all, the sheet of paper. He explained how often we are distracted by the small dot-like things that happen 
in our lives, the disappointments, the painful experiences, or how we dwell on the negative things that we experience and forget the many blessings that we receive from God, like the sheet of paper, the good things, the blessings. There's so much more than the often smaller challenges that we face every day. When we look at the big picture, like the sheet of paper, not just the black dot, we can remember to count our blessings every day, not just once in a while or when we happen to think of it. Psalm 103 verse 1 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. During this past year and a half, we have gone through a pandemic and many, many crises in the world. We face challenges, big and small. And now, just as we thought the virus was declining, finally, a variant that is stronger and more aggressive shows up. These have been really trying times, haven't they? Many, maybe, maybe many of us have lost loved ones to the COVID virus, like my family did when my dad died from it. And I know many others have lost loved ones and contracted the virus, including some of my family, and others who have been isolated for months and so lonely and feeling alone. Recently, I heard a news report that drug addiction had risen, more people have had mental health issues, and suicide rates have gone up. Being separated from each other has been difficult to say the least, so we can understand why so many people have been depressed in despair and wondering when this will ever end. In the midst of it though, in the midst of it, others have discovered the gifts of God, the people taking care of people, even if it's from a distance, actions of caring such as grocery runs for someone else, picking up someone's mail, making phone calls, sending cards, keeping in touch by mail, offering acts of love by waving outside someone's window, sending video messages, using Zoom or FaceTime or Skype, and so many other ways to reach out to others, to stay in touch, to connect. That's so important because we aren't made to be isolated people. We're made to be people in relationship. There are so many opportunities we have been given, such as here at First United Methodist Church, where we have, as I've indicated before, taken this time to do some much needed work on our building. And thanks to the generous gifts of some of the saints who have thought to leave bequests to help us fund the work, we have repaired, renewed, and refreshed our beautiful historic building. From a pandemic that shut down everything, we have been able to, as one person said, keep our eyes on the donut, not on the hole. Our goal was to praise God through the updating of our building as well as following a vision that came from several years of planning. The pandemic actually pushed us to think forward as to what we will look like following the pandemic. What would we like to do for the future of our mission and ministry here in the greater Portsmouth area and beyond? So not only did we restore, refresh, and renew our building, we formed a vision for connecting more effectively with others in our community of faith, as well as in, as in the community that surrounds us. We believe God is calling us to live outward, even as we celebrate our beautiful worship space, our ministry of the building, and look forward to worshiping in person in just a few weeks. Mentioning all this is a reminder to me and to everyone to keep our minds open to the hand of God in all things, to see beyond the black dot, to think beyond the black dot, to see the whole picture, to count our blessings, and to bless God. So what does that mean anyway? How do we bless God? Is God blessing us? Well, yes. How do we bless God? My reaction when I was researching and thinking about where God was leading me to, for today's message was to think about all the ways that we have been blessed. But then in some of my readings, I was reminded that the passage really does say, bless the Lord, O my soul. Blessing God is about responding to God's care for us. Blessing God is about praising God, giving thanks to God for so many things, 
Psalm 103, verse 2 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all God's benefits. Our ways of living can focus on, how, on God and all that God has given and us and done for us and provided for us, even in the midst of a pandemic. It's about worshiping God. It's about giving God praise. The Psalms and many other biblical passages, passages are full of acts of worship and praise for all that God has done. And when you read some of them, they may start out sounding really negative, angry, or upset, or depressed, but they always end up with an act of praise, praising God, giving thanks to God. In Psalm 148, for example, even nature praises God. We praise God in the way we live our lives, too. Reverend Todd Speed from the Decatur, uh, Georgia Presbyterian Church wrote a paraphrase from C.S. Lewis. He writes, if we are going to be impacted by a coronavirus, let that virus, when it comes, find us doing sensible and human things, praying, working, reading, listening to music, bathing the children, playing tennis, chatting to our family over a meal, and playing a game, not huddled together like frightened sheep and thinking about the worst that could possibly happen. These world crises, Lewis wrote, may break our bodies, but they need not dominate our minds. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Praising God can take many forms. We can praise and thank God even when we go through the toughest times, and that's not easy, because the chance for a new way, a new hope, and a new light at the end of the tunnel is always there. It's like knowing that and hoping that and praising God that we know we're gonna get through this. And it's a new and updated hope for living. We will come out stronger at the end of the tunnel. And when we read farther into Psalm 103, I hope you will read Psalm 103 all the way through, we are reminded that we praise God because we are forgiven, healed, redeemed from the pit, and crowned with God's faithful love and mercy. It is in that hope and that promise that we praise and thanks God. It, thank God. It is in that hope that we live and pray and act as God's children. As Dr. Speed writes, the Psalm's primary concern is not the current human condition, but the wonder and majesty of an almighty God to whom we belong forever. The Psalmist reminds us that our ultimate concern, even in the midst of uncertain and fearful times, does not have to be the vulnerability of our human condition. Our ultimate concern can become the spirit in which we turn to God in hope and turn to our neighbor in love. Let us look to God, our creator, for comfort, and let us turn to others to help and to be helped. So, how will each of us praise God this week? Through music, enjoying nature, helping someone else, caring for ourselves and our families, taking time to offer prayers of thanks or whatever we need to do in order to remember that God is with us, walking with us through this pandemic and through all of life, offering us comfort and care through family and friends and maybe even strangers, giving us hope that the future is full of opportunities Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. We praise and thank God, even in the midst of uncertainty, worry, fear, and wondering what's next. But let's see the whole picture. Let's see if we can recognize God's gift of forgiveness, grace, mercy, and love. Let us praise and thank God with all of who we are as God's children. Praise God. Amen. Our prayer for today. Holy God, you bless us and you give us the gifts of love, life, and grace. Yet so often we forget to give you thanks and to share those gifts with others. You long for us to make a commitment to having a relationship with you. But there are times when we neglect to even speak with you during the day. 
or listen to your voice. Help us to remember that you have given us everything, including eternal life. May we remember to bless your holy name and share the gifts you have given us with others. With praise and thanksgiving, we offer our prayers and give thanks for your forgiveness and steadfast love. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord.